Breaking news on the Congressional Budgetary Super Committee, and our very own Sofia Sanchez has more. And Adam Kemp brings us the latest in Lobo Sports. Stay tuned for UNM News. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Paul Nicolin. And I'm Adam Ornelas. Welcome to UNM News. Sophia Sanchez covered the Congressional Super Committee addressing the country's budget deficit and sat down with me before the show. Sophia Sanchez, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, what is the Super Committee? The Super Committee is a committee that was set up by President Barack Obama this past summer of six Democrats and six Republicans to try to get us out of our $13 trillion debt and um, have cuts of about $1.2 trillion. But as we know today, that did not happen, and Congress failed at that. So what do we wish they would have accomplished? We wish they would have met the $1.2 trillion cuts. Um, what we really wish they would have done is meet the $4 trillion cuts that were proposed earlier this year. But they didn't do any of that. And What's at stake with these failures that, that occurred today? There's lots of at stake. There's the middle class will suffer, towns and cities across the country will suffer. Um, this is going to take away from things like transportation and um, development around towns and public safety. So there's, there's lots to... This super committee was a great time for both parties to compromise, but was the political landscape atmosphere the same, or what was, what was it like leading up to the super committee? For what it seems like, they couldn't come to a deal. So it was the same as it always has been. They are, you know, doing the blame game. The Republicans are saying it's the Democrats' fault and vice versa. So it was really hard for them to even come to an agreement. Now, the president said he will veto any automatic cuts that he sees coming, but we'll see as that goes. And he also said that they still have a year to figure it out. So. All right. Well, thanks for, thanks for uh, being on today. Thank you for having me. The Bush-era tax cuts enacted in 2001 and 2003 will expire in 13 months unless Congress acts and the President signs new legislation. That's what's ahead since the Super Committee has failed to reach an agreement. The cuts added about $1.3 trillion to the deficit from 2001 through 2011, according to the Congressional Budget Office. The CBO says that that's about the total amount that the federal government deficit will run this fiscal year. Most of the rest of the $13 trillion in total government debt came from over-optimistic estimates about the health of the economy and tax revenues that it would produce, along with the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. Unless Congress acts, a 2% reduction in payroll taxes will occur on January 1st, tapping average families an additional $900 in 2012. That tax would even hit UNM work-study students. And then on January 1st, 2013, most taxpayers will see a 3 to 4% increase in their federal tax rates. But this increase would hit high income earners and those getting tax breaks on long term capital gains much harder. On average, tax filers with more than $1 million a year in income would pay an additional $128,000 in federal taxes. On a more optimistic note, if you didn't make it out to the Lobo men's soccer game against Duke for the second round of the NCAA playoffs, you missed out. Adam Camp covered the game for UNM News and details the bedlam that was to come. Lobo fans packed the UNM soccer complex as the undefeated men's soccer team hosted a tough ACC opponent in the Duke Blue Devils for the second round of the NCAA soccer tournament. Duke cracked the egg in the 51st minute with Nick Paluticuk putting the Blue Devils on top, 1-0. A red card on Duke's Chris Tweed Kent gave the Lobos a one-man advantage, and they would capitalize seven minutes later. In the 82nd minute, as the Lobo season hung in the nets, Lobos leading scorer Blake Smith bested the Duke goalie and tied the game. As the match went to sudden death overtime, Carson Baldinger's head put the Lobos into the third round of the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2005. Baldinger addressed the goals and the critics of the Lobos after the game. This kind of goal in front of these fans, in front of my hometown, home fans, I mean, it's just something that will never, ever leave, leave my mind. No, definitely. I mean, we've been hearing it a lot, a lot of trash all week about how, you know, we're not, we're in a small division, you know, small conference, all this kind of stuff, and that, you know, undefeated, but, you know, who cares who will be played, stuff like that, and it's come out being an ACC team. I mean, we've all only seen Duke on TV and basketball, so I mean, this kind of, you know, a team like this to play and beat is just, just unreal. Coach Fishbein will take the Lobos to Tampa Bay next Sunday 
to play number seven South Florida. For UNM News, I'm Adam Camp. Other big news came through for Lobo football last week. The Lobos hired Bob Davey, a former Notre Dame head coach and 10-year college football analyst for ESPN last Wednesday. Davey addressed optimistic Lobo fans, and Adam Camp was there. Lobo football introduced Bob Davey as its new head coach Thursday afternoon. Davey met hopeful fans in booming cheers as he donned the cherry blazer and addressed the fans and the media. I went to a BCS ball. I took Notre Dame to their first BCS ball game. My goal right now is just to stabilize this team and get to a bowl game. Confidence is no stranger to Coach Davey's mantra. He feels he doesn't have to beat out the major schools in recruiting to get the Lobos back on the winning side. He'd rather focus firstly on New Mexico, then Texas, Arizona, and maybe California. For UNM News, I'm Adam Camp. Finally, Lobo men's basketball heats up just as the holidays approach. Last week, the Lobos hosted the New Mexico State Aggies, who gave the Lobos a taste of some pre-Thanksgiving humble pie. Adam Camp captured the event in this photo story. Before the Lobos played host to the New Mexico State Aggies Wednesday night, Coach Steve Alford knew the task wouldn't be easy. Looking at them on tape, of just comparing our games from last year, seeing them in an exhibition game and against Northern Colorado, and just looking at stats and bodies and um, I think this is the deepest uh, state team in my five years and the biggest, most athletic, uh, probably best potential team um, that state has had in my five years. So um, we know we got our hands full. After falling 62-53, to snapping a seven-game win streak versus the Aggies, Coach Alford stood accountable for his team's poor display. Well, um, really poor performance by us, especially in the second half. And, I think you got to give State a lot of credit. I thought they, uh, they were very physical, uh, very big, very athletic, and they did a lot of good things of taking us out, obviously, of our offense. I think it was probably our, at least in our tenure, the worst shooting night and worst offensive night um, I think we've had to endure. And any time that happens, uh, I appreciate good defense, and I think they, uh, they really guarded for 40 minutes. And um, they're going to be a difficult team to beat if that's the kind of defense they get consistently. And um, they really took a lot of things away from us, and it was a good learning experience for a lot of our guys. The Lobos have a difficult upcoming non-conference schedule. They defeated Arizona State and Tempe, Arizona Friday, and they play in Anaheim, California for a Thanksgiving weekend tournament on the ESPN family of networks. For UNM News, I'm Adam Camp. And now for a controversial topic. Undocumented students at UNM and CNM will receive scholarships from the Mexican government starting next semester. Undocumented students cannot receive federal financial aid due to their undocumented status. Anthony Royball reports on this ongoing story. On September 21, 2011, leaders from UNM and CNM and the Mexican Consul announced the introduction of new scholarships designed to aid Mexican immigrant students at UNM and CNM. Mexican Consulate in Albuquerque under the leadership of the Honorable Mauricio Ibarra Ponce de Leon, Consul of Mexico here in Albuquerque, is very gracious today and soon we will be announcing a gift to the university and to the students. The scholarships will provide a large sum of grant money that will be available to 50 students at UNM. It's contributing $50,000 for a scholarship fund to provide assistance to 50 UNM students and it's also supporting Central New Mexico College and La Plaza de Encuentro. All three are here to receive this gift. President Schmidley talked how the scholarships are going to encourage families to continue and pursue their educations. Pleasure with the Mexican government had the vision for contributing scholarship funds that would help immigrants from Mexico living in the United States and their children to continue their education in an affordable way. What a great vision. Jose Ogaz made a surprising announcement that he is a Mexican immigrant in New Mexico and believes the scholarships will help students succeed in their studies. This is just uh, another, um, another opportunity for us to, to prove to whoever is doubting us that we are here to succeed and that we are here to promote our communities and we are here to help our communities grow. With the generous offer from the Mexican government, many students who are not eligible to receive financial aid now have the resources that will help them succeed in their studies. 
Web visitors to UNM News should look up Jamie Burt's profile on Lobo graduate Antonio Gonzalez. She works for Kiwanak Broadcasting as the voice of national native news. That's our show. Thanks for watching UNM News. For Paul Nicolin and me, Adam Ornelas, have a wonderful rest of the week and a happy Thanksgiving.